wasn't that nice? Hello, everyone, and welcome to I Remember Television Again. And a very memorable episode. This Tuesday is Halloween, and while many of you may have exciting plans, I think we can agree that few things are more exciting than some good old-fashioned scary television. Decades before the days of hour-long serials such as Supernatural, True Blood, and The Walking Dead, horror and sci-fi existed on TV in the form of anthologies such as Thriller, The Outer Limits, and of course, The Twilight Zone. The show we'll experience tonight, One Step Beyond offered a unique experience in that the stories were true. And by true, we mean false. But they were entertaining. And in the end, isn't that the real truth? The answer is no. But I do hope you're intrigued now. Because we're about to begin episode 27 of season two of One Step Beyond, starring Mickey Shaughnessy from the classic film Jailhouse Rock, Yvette Mimiu from the film The Time Machine, and television stalwart Christopher Dark. From March 22nd, 1960, The Clown. As I remember television again. Is the story you're about to see true? Well, no one really knows. No one as yet has been able to prove or disprove it. And so it remains in limbo, a part of that vast uncharted world of psychic phenomena beyond our powers of explanation. Laughter is an international language, and the clown, the prince of laughter. He is a universal phenomenon. He's as old as man's culture. He always has been and always will be with us. He's the heart and the essence of the circus, or the festival, the carnival. Always the very center of noisy, happy crowds. It's the same everywhere. China, Russia, Germany, Italy, America. But where does the gaiety disappear to when the festival is over, the circus ended, the carnival closed for the night. What happens to the droll man in the ridiculous costume? The carnival grounds are empty now. And the shrill piping voice of the calliope, still. The performers in their trailers are speaking in hushed tones because something happened here tonight, something that was so bizarre that even the normally superstitious carny folk found it almost impossible to believe. Just a few hours ago, the first shadow fell, a psychic shadow. Here, carnival! Where are you going? You said we could have some fun. I said if you behaved yourself. Well, didn't I? Come on. Look, a clown! <laughs> Look, a clown. Putty nose and grease paint smile. The man inside the clown? Anonymous. X. But that doesn't matter because usually the only function of the clown is to make us laugh. Usually. Double rye. Now let me see. What am I going to have? Now you ain't going to have anything, little girl, till I see some sort of identification. I'm a married woman. 
Well, I'm his wife. Look. And of age. Well, sorry, but that's the rule. Don't you worry. We all make mistakes. Anyways, I just want a, a pop. Sure. You know, you had me there for a minute. I thought he was your, uh, <laughs> well. <laughs> What's so funny? What's so funny? And who asked you? Come on over and sit down. I'll bring you your pop. You're going to drive me too far, do you understand? I am so sick of watching you put on that nice, sweet act. Listen to me. I'm listening. I'm listening. Can I have a candy bar? There you go again. Every man. Every one of them. What's the matter with you? Why do you act like that? Walk like you do. Be like that. Like what? Like you are. Well, how else can I be except like I am? You're cheap. You're cheap. Insult 1,275. I know it the first time I saw you, too. Remember out there on the road? The old man's fruit stand, you selling peaches? <laughs> peaches. I said to myself, she's fresh as a peach herself. But look out. Wrong. Wrong and... Still, I fell for it, didn't I? I had to have you. Sorry. <clears throat> Can I have that candy bar? You don't listen, do you? I talk, but you don't listen. I'm listening, Tom. I'm listening. You want to fudge you or something? All I want is, is that you act decent, you understand? Can't you see what it's doing to me? <laughs> You're getting great there, and there. Stop it! That's why you're so mean. at all, huh? Oh, gee, I'm sorry. What do they call that, a mute? Well, listen, it's not as bad as all that. And you've got a smile that makes up for a thousand words. A million, in fact.
it, too. My hair? My pretty soft hair? I like it, too. I sure do. I guess maybe I oughtn't to say that. But it's real nice. Like silk. You... Go ahead. Feed it all you like. Didn't I tell you it's smooth and silk? Sweet to have someone like you around. Someone who never says anything mean and nasty. You're real sweet. <laughs> I like you. I should do. You like anything. I can't leave you alone. Oh. I can't trust you for a minute anymore. After the talking, I double ride. Just a nice guy. A nice guy. Oh, wow. he's just a sweet clown. Come along, just as long as it's a man. Like my hair, that's all. You like it, it's soft. Will you leave me alone? Will you get out of here and leave my wife's hair alone? He's just sweet. Yeah, he's just sweet like all the others, he isn't he? He likes my hair, He's real me. sweet, he's a nice clown, he likes your hair. It's lovely hair, isn't it? Nice. It really is lovely <laughs> hair. There, you like her hair? Well, here. Have <laughs> Feel it all you want.
No, no, don't. My pretty hair. You dirty sheep. I've had it from you. I've had it, do you hear? Oh, the boss is looking for you. Better get out here with your balloons. Help! Help! Somebody help! The clown's killed a dame! What are you talking about? I'm not kidding. He's just sitting there crying like a baby. She's bleeding.
He must be nuts. Nobody opens that door till the police get here. But Buck said he saw the Buck whole thing. Buck was shooting off his mouth. Yeah, but I caught him red-handed, I tell you. I saw him with my own eyes. I don't care what you saw. Pippo couldn't do a thing like that. Anybody knows Pippo wouldn't hurt a fly. He's big, he's dumb maybe, but... But he, I saw him. He could talk for himself. When the police get here, he can write down what happened. Oh, that poor innocent girl. Stabbed with them wicked scissors of his. I always knew there was something wrong with that Pippo. You mind your own business. All right, back to work. Let's break it up. Come on. Look at that dummy. Look at his face. Grinning. Just grinning. As if it was some big joke. Pippo, the clown. Yes, usually his only function is to make us laugh. It is certainly not to disturb the secure curtain of reality, which hides from our eyes what. And if it makes you more comfortable to consider all that has happened merely an illusion, well then by all means you be comfortable. But the definition of illusion is that which is unreal. Now, the clown was soaking wet, wasn't he? Now, that's reality. And the clown never left this trailer. And that's reality. And the prison cell in which Tom Reagan will spend so many years, that is most certainly reality. But, as I said, be comfortable. In a moment, something about next week. Next week, and every week, we'll be bringing you the personal records of the rarest kind of human experience, man's adventure in the world of the unknown, that mysterious psychic world beyond our five senses. This is your invitation to take with us that astonishing one step beyond.
Well, there you have it. Pippo was guilty, not of murder, but of intimidation and of vigilantism. Or was he? He couldn't have been in two places at once, could he? We could debate that endlessly. But we can also agree that the real monster in this story was Tom Regan. Abusive husbands unquestionably exist. And perhaps that's the most important purpose of great fiction, an escape from the horrors of real life. Speaking of real life, as much as many people think they don't subscribe to supernatural theories, it's hard not to harbor some belief in karma, superstition, and a greater force in the universe. Can curses that people place come to fruition, at least when directed against others who have wronged them? Let's watch one such example right now in episode two of season four, starring Donald Heron, Thorne Thatcher, Patricia Michonne, and as always, One Step Beyond's director and host, John Newland. From October 13th, 1959, Doomsday. Have you ever had the feeling that you knew what someone was going to say just before he said it? Or have you ever walked into a strange room and had the sensation that you'd been there before? Well, if you have, you've taken a small step beyond. Now watch a giant step. Do you like ancient castles? Well, this is a very special one. There are no ghosts who wail or rattle chains. And there's nobody buried in the walls. But there is something that sets it quite apart. Something that happened in this very room centuries ago. As a matter of fact, it is still happening. Mr. Physician, what is this message? How is Jamie? Your son is dying, my lord. Dying? How can he be dying? Jamie! Jamie, lad, what's this stupid old fool talking about? Oh, get up, Jamie. Come, we'll pull their foolish old beards and send them running. Jamie. <coughs> hey, lad. <coughs> they told me you were the cleverest physician in all Europe. And this man's been with me for 20 years. And yet you stand here, the two of you in your velvet robes, like a couple of scrawny old women. I have bled the boy seven times with leech and lancet. I have used lotions and emetics and plasters. If he's dying, you've done nothing. How could he be dying, my oldest son? My dearest son. How could he be dying? The Black Death could not kill him. It killed his mother. It killed his younger brothers, all except one. My daughter. But not Jamie. Yes, he seemed a strong young man. At first I was hopeful. At first I was hopeful. <laughs> How can you stand there and take his death so lightly? My lord. Why is he dying? I don't know, my lord. You don't know? At first I thought it was a turgid condition of the blood. You don't know? You calmly tell me he's dying. And you don't know why. Oh, my lord. You're a fraud. I have treated princes and kings. Oh, worse than a fraud. What are these? My medicines, of course. All oh, your poisons. <coughs> when you came here 12 days ago, my son was ill, but he wasn't dying. Well, what have you done with him? My lord, I cannot accept such an insinuation. 
With my lord's permission, I will leave at once. No, you will not, please. Stop him. What is this, a plot? A plot against me? No, my lord. Because of Jamie. Through Jamie. Do you hope to get at me? What have you been paid? No. Come on, tell me, what have you been promised? Very well. One thing I'll promise you. The day that Jamie is buried, each one of you will be buried. I must remind my lord that I am under the protection of the Prince of Padua. You are in my castle, Mr. Physician. The Prince of Padua is a long way away. But I have done everything I could. This is so unfair. Kill! Jamie! Kill! Kill! Hey, lads, rest now. Now take it easy. Take it easy. In his delirium, he has called this woman's name constantly. I ask the servants. They say there was a young girl of that name living in your village for some months. They say the young man was most fond of the girl. Most fond? <laughs> Idle women's chatter. She was a pretty thing. She had a bright way with her. But she meant nothing to my son. And yet he constantly speaks her name as he lies dying. What has the girl got to do with it? I think a great deal, my lord. Why did you send her away? Her father was a wheelwright. He had completed his business in the village. He moved on. The servants say otherwise. And so you would prefer to listen to the servants? The boy will certainly die. I do not wish to be murdered, my lord. Why was the girl sent away? I told Jamie to give her up. And he defied me. For the first time in his life, he defied me. A loving son defying his father. The girl had bewitched him. Ah, my lord. But what are you trying to say? How soon after the girl was sent away did the illness begin? I don't know. Uh, a week, I suppose. A scarce three days, my lord. Well, if you know, why do you ask me? Almost 30 years I have practiced my arts. I have cut for the stone successfully more than a hundred times. I have cured the plague, even after the carbuncles appeared. I have trepanned into the skulls of princes, releasing the noxious vapors, and they have prospered. But my lord, when I am faced with this, Mark the way he breathes, as though all the tubes in his body had been knotted. I have seen such agony before, my lord. In Naples, in Lausanne, in a village near Lyon, each time the victim died, each time I was helpless. Why? My lord just spoke the word. What word? Bewitched. Are you trying to save yourself? If you think so, kill me now, my lord. She's just an ordinary girl. She's not a vagabond. She's not a gypsy. In Geneva, I saw two children, aged no more than ten, and of a splendid merchant family whose acts of witchcraft were beyond belief. Oh. <coughs> Jimmy! My lord. No, Jimmy! No. It is not his physicians you must punish, my lord.
find the girl. Bring her to me. Liar! 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 Silence. Liar! Silence! Continue. I, uh... I found her dancing in an open field. I... I came upon her suddenly. She, she didn't see me. It was a strange kind of a dance she did, the like of which I've never seen before. And as she danced, she... she laughed and uttered strange cries. And then the, the skies were full of clouds and it started to rain. And I was terrible frightened. I have danced many times. And I was always laughing. And why not? I was happy. I was in love and I was loved. The maid will remain quiet. How could I not laugh and sing when Jamie loved me? Silence! No matter how many of his witnesses lie, I did not harm them. How could I harm my darling Jamie? Tell the court all that you told me. Well, uh, well, my lord, I, I... You told me she caused all the milk suddenly to turn sour. She did, she did, she did. And you saw imps flying in the air above her head? Uh, on two occasions, my lord, I did. And like all the other witnesses, didn't you see me whirl a cat in the air? I'd disappear after saying magic words. My oldest son is lying dead. And the witch mocks me. Catherine, with thine own hands, thou hast placed thy mark in the black book of perpetual death. Thou art a sorcerer and a witch. Now then, Catherine, hear the awesome sentence of this civil court. Thou shalt be remitted forthwith into the hands of the public execution. No! No! To be taken to an open field, 100 rods from the castle gates. There thou shalt be bound to a wooden stake with leather thongs and burned. No! Take her! Take her! Take him from me! And now you kill me! Take her away! As much as I loved him, that's how much I hate you! If it's true, if I do possess the power you see, I curse you! And I curse all that follow you and bear your name! Ted Jamie, your firstborn son, died before his father. So will it be in every generation! Take her! I Take her away! Burn her! Burn her! Burn her! When? It's almost over, I'm afraid. How much longer? Who knows? About an hour, at the most. At least there's this to be said, that foolish superstition is finally being laid to rest. An oldest son is surviving his father. The Sunday papers will have to give up one of their favorite little tales. Peter, if you could convince Will of that, it might save his sanity. What? Didn't you see his face? But he's very devoted to the Earl. He's feeling great sorrow. And even greater terror. Oh, now, Harriet, don't let's start that. I know him. He's my husband. He's absolutely certain that he has less than an hour to live. Will's an intelligent man. Oh, Peter, intelligence has nothing to do with it. He feels that you pass the sentence of death on him. Will? Will? 
Oh, Will, darling. Leave me alone. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Will. Why the delegation? Can't I just be by myself? Well, you left the sick room in such a state. Harriet was a little worried about you. Now look, Will, you really can't believe Can't what... I? Will, darling, this isn't the dark ages. It's the 20th century. Tell that to Uncle Francis and Great Uncle Peter. They both died in the 20th century. Millions died in the war that killed Francis. And thousands died of diphtheria in 1906, like Peter. Yes, yeah. And I suppose it's just one of those odd bits of chance that for eight generations, the oldest well, it son... Well, certainly wasn't because some stupid peasant girl cried out a curse, I'll tell you that. Intellectually, I must believe you. Still, I'm absolutely certain that somehow, within the next hour, somehow, before my father dies, in the very best of health, at the tender age of 28, surrounded by my loved ones and my doctor, Somehow, I'm going to die! This emotionalism is senseless. Now look, Will, I'm going to prepare a sedative for you that will put you to sleep for a couple of hours. No! Don't tell me no. I'm your doctor. Will, darling. Go after him. Tell him I'll not take his sedative. But, darling... Do as I say! Why, if it let you get some sleep? Can't you imagine why? Don't you know what wonderful thoughts are whirling around in my head? How is young William to die? A bolt of lightning? <laughs> there isn't even a cloud in the sky. Will I be run over by a train? Here, in my own house? Or will the roof fall in? It's managed to stay up there for 800 years. Oh, Will, you aren't going to die. Or will my doctor make a mistake? Prescribe the wrong medicine, the wrong dosage? Will, you're breaking my heart. <laughs> or will my darling wife become weary of her babbling husband and take a shotgun down from the wall and put him out of his misery? Stop it! Stop it! Stop it, Will! Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Tell him no sedative. Oh, and Harriet. Yes. Check with the airport again, will you? See if you can find any new information on when Jamie's plane is due. Wait. Little brother Jamie, an earl at 22. Not bad, eh? Oh, Will, for heaven's sake, stop. Of course, I do feel a pang of sadness for his firstborn. Nothing's going to happen. Perhaps he'll live longer than I did. How is it possible? How can I die? How? How? William, are you all right? Go away!
I told you to leave me alone. Your father just died. It happened very quickly, just a few minutes ago. There wasn't even time to call you to the bedside. How is that possible? How can it be? You see, <gasps> the curse was childish nonsense. I feel as if... I don't know, I... I feel as if I'd just been born again. I feel as if a ton of rock had been lifted from my chest. He's, he's dead. He's really dead. I can't tell you what these last minutes have been like. I know, darling, I know. I've died 10,000 10, times in this room, Harriet. Suddenly, everything's all right. Everything's all right? Did you hear that? Did you hear what I said? Oh, Will, darling. My father dies and all I can feel is infinite relief. Oh, you poor darling, you've been through so much. He's dead and all I... All I want to say is thank God. There now. There. Come, sit down. Sit down, darling. Come on, sit down. There. Don't cry. Now that it's all over, the doctor can give you that sedative. You can get some sleep. All right. Yes. I want to sleep. Yes, you sleep. Harriet, I loved him. Oh, I know. I loved him. I know, darling. I know. I know. Right there now. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. I'm working as fast as I can. Now, just you relax, or I'll give you a shot, too. When he wakes up, he'll be all right. I hope so. I hope I've done the right thing. Of course you did the right thing. Poor chap's been under a strain enough to kill a horse. I didn't want you to die. It's just... I was so afraid. <laughs> Forgive me, Father. William's younger brother opened the castle to tourists who come in droves to see the place where the first-born son of each generation was cursed by a witch so many, many years ago. But certainly Catherine could not have been a witch. Certainly her trial was a farce. 
and her death a tragic injustice. But then why has her curse been so effective? Well, if we want to fall back on our old friend, coincidence, the odds on such a coincidence are three billion to one. In any event, James, the present Earl of Kildane and William's younger brother, has never married. Curse or coincidence, the Kildane line will end with him. A clue about next week in one moment. Next week, and every week, we'll be bringing you the personal records of the rarest kind of human experience. Man's adventure in the world of the unknown. That mysterious psychic world beyond our five senses. This is your invitation to take with us that astonishing one step beyond. Many times in life, you'll encounter events that some people swear must represent divine intervention. Yet others insist on writing it off as coincidence. Of course, there is such a thing as self-fulfilling prophecy. Would the prophecy in this episode have been fulfilled had it not been for the very lie told in order to prevent it? We can't answer that question. But hopefully we've stimulated your mind tonight as well as making your heart pound in fear. Thank you for watching and joining KVCR in the celebration of this evening of an underrated and understated classic television series. Join us next week on I Remember Television Again as we relive some of the earliest filmed appearances of a character who has spanned many media, Flash Gordon. Until next time, when we venture back to where this magic all began, as I remember television again.